Hi, my name is Thais Gibson and I'm the co-owner and creator of the Personal Development School. This is your Daily Breakthrough video and in this video I want to talk about the different types of activating strategies that can trigger the anxious preoccupied attachment style. And I'm going to talk about the specific types of strategies and this is part of a series where I'm going to talk about the specific types in one video because there's just a lot of information there and then I'm going to go back through and talk about little breakthrough strategies or things that you can do um, with these different things that are coming up. So. First and foremost, before I dive into all the content, we are doing a stay-at-home sale due to everything that's happening during this time. It looks like things are maybe taking a bit of an upturn, um, so that's really happy and, and that's a wonderful thing, but we're just trying to support our community and, and everything that's sort of being affected as a result of that. So if you're interested and you're thinking about joining the school, you can do so right now while we have this going on um, by entering the coupon code with you in the box when you go to enroll and it's going to allow you to have 25% off of any membership bundles. So any like three months, six months, um, 12 month memberships, as well as single course purchases, purchases if you just wanted to do a single course. So stay tuned for that. Um, and then also, we are um, adding inside of our community an extra live webinar every week. So we have three, I literally do three live webinars with everybody every week and people get to come in and ask questions live and it's, it's sort of a fun process. Um, and then I think we have almost 30 courses by the end of this month, um, as well as 60 previously recorded webinars. So there's a ton of content in there for everybody um, about really specific things that goes into like very long form um, strategies and, and breakthrough tools and subconscious reprogramming. Um, processes in there. So let's talk about the different types of activating strategies. <clears throat> and I want to also say one other thing. Anxious preoccupied attachment styles can have like, I wouldn't quite call it a deactivating strategy, but they have one specific thing that they do that can actually cause, it's sort of like a temporary deactivating strategy that then creates a more intense activating strategy as, as the mind sort of rebounds to equilibrate from this. So I'm going to go through what that is in here as well right at the end. So stay tuned for that. Um, okay. This keeps bouncing around. Okay. So um, first and foremost, one of the most common things I'll see anxious, preoccupied individuals do like when they have an activating strategy. So, so think of activating strategies as like subconscious excuses to get closer. And Wanting to get closer is not a bad thing. It's a beautiful thing. And, and all relationships should aspire to keep getting closer and, and growing the bond between two people. But sometimes what can happen specifically with activating strategies is that <clears throat> what is essentially happening beneath the surface is first a partner is triggered. It's, it's wanting to get closer based on fear, not based on truth. And so it's coming from like an unhealthy or fear-based space. So basically a wound is triggered. It's like a fear of loss or something like this. And then what happens is the anxious preoccupied attachment style gets afraid and, and confused and, and anxious. And, it cr and they create these sort of unconscious coping mechanisms out of that, these subconscious strategies to try to get closer to their partner. And this can sometimes in certain cases become like, and then I, I, like, it's so well-intentioned and it's so just based on fear and wanting love and like the most innocent reasons. But one of the, like the sort of things that can come out of it sometimes is that the anxious, anxious, preoccupied partner can become very, when they're in that state of mind, just like any other attachment style when they're triggered, can become like very self-involved in a way. And, and again, like, so does a fearful avoidant when they are triggered. So does a dismissive avoidant when they are triggered. But sometimes you can get so consumed with trying to like get rid of the fear of loss and know that everything's okay, that you come up with all these like elaborate strategies and you forget that somebody else, you forget to see the person that you're interacting with and it can accidentally violate people's boundaries. And this is why it's the, it, that's actually the reason why that when you're reaching out and reaching out and feeling afraid that you'll see the person pull back. It's because what happens is there can be a bit of a boundary violation that you're not realizing. And sometimes I think if you're watching this as the anxious attachment individual, sometimes I think you feel like, oh my gosh, it's, it's that I'm further being rejected and it's reinforcing that the person is about to leave or abandon me. But a lot of times it's not that. It's that the person's feeling a sense of um, boundary violation or invasiveness or these things at a very low level that can cause them to pull away further. But it's often easy to read when you're already in that triggered state as the person, in fact, not caring or, in fact, um, you know, being on their way out or about to abandon the relationship. And, and it, it, that just further recycles that fear, right? And so you can get into these like sort of 
funny spaces where like you want to come closer, the person perceives a tiny boundary violation and that makes them just pull away a tiny bit, but it seems to reinforce that original fear, right? So it's really important to like know that so that you can not give it the wrong meaning and then it keeps triggering even more and keeps that vicious cycle sort of alive, if that makes sense. So um, here are the different strategies that the anxious preoccupied often uses. Number one, they can use an emotional dumping strategy. So they can do this thing, and fearful avoidance can do this as well, where it's like um, when somebody is, is in your space, and it can be a friend, it can be a family member, but it can especially be a partner, um, you'll like overshare things or, or um, super, super go in depth talking about things because you're just so wanting that connection. But sometimes as a result of that, um, you can – sort of be in a space where it's like, again, a tiny boundary violation to somebody else where like you forget to go back and forth and be like, oh, hey, how are you doing? You know, one example of this that I've seen quite consistently is when an anxious preoccupied person is going through a challenge in their relationship and they call their friend all the time and they tell all the challenges and all the frustrations. And then sometimes the friend gives advice and then the anxious preoccupied individual isn't really calling for the advice. They're calling for bonding and for closeness. And I've seen people before be like, my friend never takes my advice and it's frustrating. But sometimes you can be misreading the actual subconscious strategy the person is using to reach out for that advice. Sometimes it's not to, or to reach out for that, um, like why they're calling. And so sometimes it's not for the advice and for solutions. Sometimes it's actually more for just emotional connection and closeness and feeling like somebody's there to see them, hear them, understand them. And that same, that same thing can take place in your romantic relationship. And so this is something that like, I think a lot of people experience to a certain degree, specifically the most anxious, preoccupied and fearful avoidance. Um, but there are two sort of downsides that can come with it. Number one, people can misread that and be like, you never take my advice. You only ever call me and you don't listen and they can get offended. It can cause some friction in relationships at times. Um, or number two, sometimes um, you forget to be with yourself in order to solve the problem within yourself or within the relationship dynamic. And instead it can sort of reinforce this bad story you have about your partner, let's say, in that specific example. Like I've seen a lot of people over the years, they, they vent to their friends and family about their partner. They say negative things to their friends and family. And it's not even that they think that negatively of their partner just because they're hurt and frustrated and those things are magnified. And then they seek that closeness and that bond to others. So they end up expressing in that area as an activating strategy to get their needs met over here when they feel like they're unmet over here. But then they're accidentally painting this really not so nice picture of this person over here. And that can cause friction in the relationship as well long term. I feel like that's a whole separate video, to be honest, because there's a lot of stuff in that. But we'll call that the emotional dumping activating strategy. Um, when it comes to the actual relationships, the romantic relationship part, um, sometimes anxious, preoccupied attachment styles will use physical closeness, affection, or sex um, as a strategy to bond. And sometimes they do this. Remember, the big thing that we're looking for here is not like, like that you shouldn't have physical affection or shouldn't have sex in a relationship. It's about, it's about what the, the fear, is it based on fear or truth? What's the sponsoring intention behind the action? And so if you're in a place, for example, where like you don't actually feel ready to be intimate in your relationship or you are on the rocks in the relationship, maybe you've broken up and you're maybe getting back together and you, you don't want to sleep with the person and you want to sort of take your time to assess where you're at and all these different things, be aware that sometimes your subconscious mind will actually try to draw you in closer to the relationship through using sex because it's, what is that? It's like a lot of vulnerability, a lot of presence, a lot of things that your subconscious is craving. And so it always is, your brain is a needs meeting machine. It's always seeking the fastest way of getting the needs met. So you can end up doing that over there and then having downsides from that as well. And again, it's not the act of like being affectionate or being intimate that's wrong. It's what the, the sponsoring intention is behind it. Is it, is it an act of desperation and for closeness that might actually violate your own boundaries as a person? Or is it like a reflection of exactly where you feel you're at in a relationship and how comfortable and safe and all these good things you feel. So then that is a natural byproduct of that taking place. And so you really want to be clear about that as well. Cause I see a lot of poor, dear, anxious, preoccupied attachment styles over the years who you know, are going through relationship challenges and then do these things that they're like, why did I do that? And they end up regretting it later, not realizing that if they could just realize that that was a, 
a subconscious strategy they might run into and have a healthier boundary set out ahead of time or healthier way of getting that need met ahead of time, then their subcon subconscious mind wouldn't have had to take that route in the moment. So the next one is the fear of loss or abandonment activation. And so whenever there's a fear of loss trigger, and this is like a very prevalent sort of primary um, imprint of the anxious preoccupied attachment style person, this creates those clinging behaviors. This is the very specific one that tends to create them the most. So it's when there's like feeling like the person might leave, when there's like any jealousy in the relationship, when there's any um, insecurity just based on like things that are happening, um, anything that's triggering insecurity, that's usually when the fear of loss or abandonment comes up. And then that creates this need to reach out, reach out, reach out a lot of the times. And so again, like I'll talk about that a little bit more in a separate video, what to do with that as we go back through the series. Um, we have a ton of reprogramming tools for that inside of the school as well that go a lot more in depth, but I'll definitely touch on that as we go through the series. So stay tuned for that too. Um, now the loneliness, and I put these two things separate, the fear of loss or, or fear of abandonment activating strategy, and then also the loneliness activating strategy. And what this is specifically is when there is, this is what I'm specifically referring to by this, is that sometimes an anxious preoccupied individual will feel lonely in their lives, okay? And then sometimes they'll enter into a relationship that isn't actually the person that they want to, would want to hold out for and truly be with if they pause and ask themselves those questions. And usually what happens is the subconscious mind of the anxious preoccupied person doesn't like to be alone. It's triggering. So they can enter into this like sort of triggered state in their lives when they're out of a relationship where they feel like they don't have this like secure attachment person. And it can be almost like a re-traumatization from them because they don't like that feeling. It'll be like a low level discomfort a low level trauma, but a high, it's a pretty high degree of discomfort for a lot of anxious preoccupied people. But again, depending on like how strong your anxious attachment style is. Um, and so sometimes they can fall into traps of like, you know, not giving themselves proper time coming out of a relationship to like be with themselves, heal, work on themselves before entering into a new one. Sometimes they kind of jump into things too quickly without like maybe looking to see if there are red flags or, or really assessing and evaluating like does this person have all the qualities that I want? Is this really the person that I would want to spend my time with and settle down with? And, and sometimes they go in too soon. And then because they get afraid of all these um, abandonment feelings or lost feelings or splitting up feelings, then they end up staying for longer than they would want to. And so that in and of itself is a really important thing to address if you're an anxious, preoccupied individual. The next one we have is... Um, a self-defeating thought activation activation. So this is the one I was talking about, which is um, where it actually starts up deactivating and then becomes activating. And this is a common thing I see. It won't always deactivate everybody, but it can feel like it to a certain degree. This is where anxious, preoccupied individuals feel rejected and they start telling themselves these painful stories that actually create a barrier between themselves and their partner in a relationship. But it's like this, they go, oh my gosh, I'm not good enough. This is never going to work. They're not going to want me. I'm unwanted by this person. They're interested in other people. They'll tell themselves this very self-defeating narrative. And it actually puts this huge wall and sometimes makes them even go inwards and sort of try to protect themselves to a certain degree in a way that's deactivating. But it usually won't last that long. It usually it'll be like a step back and then a lot more steps forward that will then link, lead to more of those fear of loss or abandonment activating strategies where it's like those clinging behaviors that come as a result. And the last one that I see is um, this is a form of activation as well that can be sort of a bit of a deactivation, similar to the fearful avoidant, where an anxious preoccupied can develop feelings more easily, I would say, as a general rule, for um, um, other individuals. But they are very unlikely to act on those feelings a lot of the time. So they can be like very loyal, very, you know, invested in their relationship. I won't even say feelings. Feelings is too strong of a word, to be quite honest. Attraction. I wouldn't say it's a limerence, but it can be for sure. And I'm going to do a video about that as well. Um, but it can be more of like these cr like crushes. Like it's, it's not quite feelings and it's not quite obsessive infatuation, but it's like sort of somewhere in the middle. This is what I've observed a lot of the time with a lot of anxious preoccupied individuals. And, and what that does is it's always, it's always a reflection of needs that are unmet in your life or traits that are disempowered within yourself. So it's like, you, let's say, let's say somebody's really good with their boundaries and you're not, 
and somebody shows up and maybe they're in the workplace and they're so good with their boundaries and you might be like, wow. And see that your subconscious mind wants wholeness. It wants to attach things that bring wholeness into its space. And so it'll see like somebody with good boundaries and it'll be like, wow, you know, like, oh my goodness. And what happens as a result of that is you can get infatuated with that thing. But that infatuation in and of itself is just feedback that you need to create that balance in your inside world, not by trying to necessarily bring somebody into your, from your outside world. So, so you can have that infatuation there, or it can also be from needs that a person is meeting. So maybe you're with somebody who is not making you feel um, special or wanted or important or significant. And then somebody, let's say your neighbor or somebody in your workplace or whatever it might be does, the brain is also going to really try to infatuate and attach to that to a certain degree because it's like meeting a need that's unmet. So what you really want to do from these things, and I can talk about that in a different video, but what you really want to do is be able to isolate what that need is or what that trait is that the person represents and has and find ways of empowering these things within yourself to bring harmony into your internal reality and back into your relationship or request the needs from your relationship to be met that you feel like somebody represents outside of it. So I hope this all makes sense. These are the major activating strategies with a touch of deactivation in there for the anxious preoccupied attachment style individual. Thank you so much for watching and for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe to this channel if you're getting a lot of value out of this channel itself, and I will see you in the next video.